and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria. Divine Purpose with Usana Ministry Incorporated in City, Nigeria. God bless you. I'm privileged again to come your way with this you know, message that is titled Avoiding Trouble from the City Gates. Avoiding Troubles from the City Gates. What is the meaning of the City Gates? A gate in every, you know, uh, Occasion, like you can understand, is an access in and out of a place. The gates of a nation, the gates of a community, the gates of a family. In fact, even individually, there is a gate into our lives. So, there are troubles that come from those gates. Now, again, spiritually, the gates is a place where there is a meeting amongst people. The elder ones can sit in the gate and then they are meeting. It's a place of decision making where destinies of people are decided. <laughs> so that is why we need to avoid the troubles that is coming from there. I want to say this because very many have been in the troubles from the city gates and they hardly can come out of it. I will give you a very good instance. The Bible told us in the book of Esther, chapter number one. From verse number 10, you read, and it says, And the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuna, Bita, Abona, Bitan, and Abata, Zecta, and Kakas, the seven tablets that sat in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on. Oh my God, she was fair to look on. <laughs> so the king wanted to display the beauty of his wife and it was in the place of decision making. He was making merry. He had just thrown off the ceremony, you know, drinking and whining for seven good days. At this seventh day, he decided to say, my queen, come and show your beauty. Come and display to the whole world that you are a beautiful queen. <laughs> but the Bible said, the servant or the messengers, when they got to where the queen, Vasti was, and told her, Vasti said, sorry, tell the king I am not coming. Not knowing there was a trouble that was coming for her. That was when the cacos, those who were, you know, the executive members of, you know, the kings, you know, palace, they sat down and they took a decision. And they said, for this that this woman has done, O king, if we don't pay her with the right coin, every other woman will do the same to everyone for us. Yeah. And so for this not to happen, then the Bible said they took a decision. And that was what took Esther, I mean, the, the fasting away from the throne and brought Esther in. Many people would have been saying, oh, it was a you know, God who did it. No, 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 no. It has just been contacted and connected with the troubles that were in the city gate. I want to shock you. By the grace of God, when two, three friends or four, as the case may be, stand in a particular place to discuss, the first that leaves become the discussion by others, two of us. Uh -huh. That is a place a decision is reached. And before you know it, that decision is now turning around. The city gates of every nation is the senior house of assembly. Where the decisions are made. The moment that decision is made, it's binding on every member of that nation. You cannot go and say, well, I was not there, and so that decision cannot harm me. I was not there, that decision cannot hold me. Beloved, you are under that decision. 
There are so many people that have been, you know, in troubles of diverse kind based on the decision that was made on their behalf. The city gate can be spiritual, the city gate can be physical. Praise the living God. I want you to get this clear that you have to avoid the troubles that is coming from the city gate. I would want to quickly, you know, give you another reference. You know, how should I avoid that trouble? Now, the scripture told us in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 23. Look at Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 23. It says, Our husband is known in the gates when he's seated among the elders of the land. That's the city gate we're talking about. A place where elders sit down to take decision. There is also such a place in your family. You might not be there, but decisions are made in that family. And that is wrong affects you positively or negatively. So it was a place. This is the husband of the virtuous woman that we talk about in the scripture. That she, he is respected, he is known, he is honored at the city gate. So, how will a man be known at the city gate? He, has this man not been known several years before? Has he not been coming? But it, it became so because this man was able to stand, you know, to defend his house. So he was known and respected. Praise the living God. I want you to get this point clear. That if you are a man that talks too much, you are going to face the trouble of the city gate. It's not everywhere that you talk. You know, it's not everywhere that you introduce yourself. It's not everywhere you introduce your wife. It's not everywhere you introduce your husband. Say, oh, if you, are, if you know the husband of mine, he's a very great man. He's a very wonderful father. He's a beloved. You are putting trouble into that husband you know, life. He may not be there when you are saying that, but you are saying it with the clarity of your mind, with the way he's, you know, he's related with you in the house. You saw him actually as a father, but I want to appeal strongly with you. Don't sell him, because you are putting him in trouble. The more you are praising him outside, the more the works of darkness are going to be, you know, angry and then penetrating to make sure they do evil against your husband. Ah, beloved, have you not seen several times when a woman say, ah, or even a man can tap his you know, chest and say, I know the man married. I know the woman married. He will never have eyes for another woman. I know. And after you have boasted, sometimes you'll be very shocked, not even up to a year or two, the man has turned the other way around. Is that is the man that you say, you know, is you know, you know him, it's not the one that is now after other women outside. You'll be very sure you sold him. That is why I'm saying avoid the trouble that is coming from the city gates. Hallelujah. The city gate is a place that no man on earth can avoid. It is you might not be there completely, you might not be there, but whatever the soul that is rich, like I said, is binding on you. That's why the city gate is a place where your matters are discussed, and at the end, positive things can happen to you, and at the end, negative things can happen to you without even knowing where it is coming from. Oh, a father boasts of his son. I know the son I, I know I give birth to. A mother says, I know my children. They are well to do. They are responsible. And suddenly, sometimes you begin to wonder, how come these children become irresponsible? <laughs> the man, the Bible said, he was known in the gates. It's a man who was able to keep his house. He never got there and began to make man. He's a man who was able to keep his house. If there is anyone who will be successful, should, should be a man that keeps secrets. Yes, your husband is very good. Your wife is very good. Brother, stop saying it to people outside. Stop saying it. Telling people outside is dangerous. You are just creating temptation that you may not be able to overcome. Because the moment you are saying that the devil will say, let me go and try him. Hello, did you remember? The Bible told us in the book of Job that one day God said of Job, this is a very righteous man. <laughs> and then the devil said, ah, just give me the time. Let me go and try him and see you will discover that he is not the way you are seeing him. And then God said, ah, okay, you can go. But not thought his soul. Let me shock you, beloved. If God has not by himself sustained his soul of Job, Job would have been destroyed in that temptation. 
So don't cause temptation for your husband. Don't cause temptation for your wife. Don't cause temptation for your children that they cannot be able to overcome. That's what I'm saying to you today. Avoid these troubles that are coming from the city gates. <laughs> oh, beloved, I'm telling you because I know exactly what I'm saying. I'm going to give you the story. This is from my own kingdom, the Benin kingdom. I'm going to give you this story. Beloved, you know, the story has it that in those days, there was a king that is called Obad Esigi. Obad Esigi was the royal, you know, king of the Benin kingdom. <laughs> and so he has carcass men that have been selected who were in a, about seven in numbers that are decision makers in the land. And amongst them was one they called Olia Nogile. Ah, the story has it that whenever they come to the palace, they are coming to take the decision that will be binding on the entire Edo people. And so when they come to the palace, Olia will stand up and say, Hey, <laughs> if you see the woman marry, no woman can be like that. In terms of beauty, my wife is very beautiful. In terms of character, her character is great. That was exactly what this man was saying. Not just once, not twice, not twice, not four. He began to say it every time they come to the meeting. He said, <laughs> ah, he had been warned separately. Stop saying this, stop saying this. One day the other said to him, do you even know that all women are the same? And then that decision, you know, that you know that that voice or that statement that was made by the upper SEG brought about a decision that brought down the wife of that man. Well, what is the name of the wife? It's called Imagoro. Imagoro was really a very pretty woman. <laughs> there is even a school that is built here and it's named after her, Imagoro College. What happened? The upper went ahead and investigated what does this woman like so much. And the story has it that the investigators came back and said to the other, this woman liked beads. She liked all the things for which you would have to dress as a woman. Tinklets and all kinds of ornaments. She loves them. And so the other called on the cripple that is in the palace and said to the cripple, collect all of these things. He gave the cripple all these beads, all the things that, you know, the man will love. I said, go straight to Imaguru and entice her. Entice her and tell her, if she can sleep with you, I will give you all of this, you know, triplets, you know, gold and uh, bronze and every other thing that she, you know, he came with. And actually, when the cripple got there, he enticed Imaguru and Imaguru did not know, because let me tell you the truth, the kind of temptation that you are putting your people for telling Others or people who has you know uh, you know can I use the word ability spiritually than you? You can't you know you don't know how they are going to bring it to pass. So the story has is that when this cripple you know finally was able to entice Imamuru, the cripple slept with Imamuru, and when that happened, the cripple came back to the palace and told the palace, "This one has not got away happened," and that was it. The, the, the king said, aha, that's good. They gathered again for another meeting one day, and then the same man, only had, you know, stood up and said, ah, no woman is like my wife in my will. It was then the other stood up and said, shut up. Do you know that your wife has committed abomination? And the man was shot. And then the other ordered for the people to come over. And as soon as the people got there, they said, open your mouth and tell the whole, you know, people here what you have done to Imaguru. And that was how the whole story was revealed. And so this man now became moody, became shocked at what he heard. Because even in the house, this woman never told him. When the eyes of this woman was clean, after doing the abominable act, this woman never told the, the husband what happened. What happened then? The man went home straight. And as soon as he got home, he inquired of the wife, is it true what I heard from the palace? That the people slept with you. The woman could not hide it anymore. And the woman burst into tears and confessed and said it's true. The man became ashamed of himself. <laughs> Hello, do not cause trouble for you.
Your man, remember the scripture told us that the life and death they are in the power of the tongue. Yes, by the grace of God, I need to let you understand this. Even the scripture told us that pride goeth before a fall. Anytime you try to announce yourself, you try to announce your wife, you try to announce your what, <laughs> like so many people on you know social media, they want to go and declare their what. They want to go and declare to the people, you are saying to them, you have arrived. <laughs> you have arrived. You are playing with the battle that is coming from the city gates. By the time the battle hooks you, why is it that so many of them die young? Why is it that so many of them have no home again? Why is it that so many of them are becoming, you know, useless in the society? So many of them end up becoming, you know, a, a drunkards and womanizers. They can no longer have a steady life. Beloved, social media people, I want to advise you. Stop showing your world. Stop saying this is who you are. It is no more necessary. You don't need to demonstrate or display to people who you are. Anybody that sees you will know who you are. Don't go and use your mouth. Don't go and use the Facebook. Don't go and use every other you know, social media to begin to demonstrate your work. Whereas you are not even you know, up to what you are saying. Pride goes before you fall. I will see you next time. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever you are, you can represent us. In your locality, in your city, or even in your nation, you can represent us. As you are looking through the contacts that is scrolling on this screen, you can contact us. And in case you also need prayers and counseling, you can also contact us. I remain yours, Bishop Dr. Daniel Ogi. See you next week, same time. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. Please do well to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you will be notified when we release a new video. Thank you.